What is up, you guys? Teller checking in for the recap of UFC Vegas 84, where we will be doing matchmaking for all of the winners on the main card. We'll be doing five fights of matchmaking there. We'll recap the bets we targeted for this card, and uh, we'll, we'll quickly go over every fight on the card, and uh, we'll talk about any major takeaways we got from this card. Again, the first event taking place in 2024. Uh, it, wasn't the way I wanted to kick the year off from a betting standpoint. Uh, interestingly enough, we pick almost every single fight correct on the card, including an underdog pick of Mario Batista on the main card. But when it came to where my action was, uh, you know, the, the two fights I picked incorrect were involved with my action. So I wasn't happy about that. Uh, you know, in the first fight, we had Joshua Van taking, uh, taking a match on short notice against the UFC newcomer Felipe Bunes. Looked great. Had a little bit of a slow start uh, as he has in the past. And once he started to get going, man, he just put it on Bunes. Uh, you know, Felipe, he actually surprised me early in that fight because from the tape I watched on him, I wasn't that impressed with his striking. Even though I know he was coming into this fight uh, off a knockout victory that he had over an LFA, uh, over a decently respectable respectable opponent. But still, when you really watched his tape as a whole, I wasn't that impressed there. And uh, when he was fighting Van, he had a little bit of a snap and pop to his shots early on. Uh, but but I think that he, that kind of uh, started to wilt. Uh, I think the adrenaline was getting to him. And then Joshua Van was just a man on a mission. I had a post on IG. He, Joshua Van reminded me of the T-1000 from the Terminator. He was just going to continue to march forward until he got that finished. He's an absolute stud. And uh, he got that second round finish where he just broke down Felipe Bunas there. Uh, and the next fight, uh, unfortunately, I did have Tom Nolan mixed in a parlay. Of course, the other leg, the other leg cashed quite easily. But Tom Nolan... Uh, you know, we have seen some of these fighters come off Dana White's contender series and really drop the ball, specifically in their UFC UFC debuts. Uh, I, I didn't think that was going to be for the case for Tom Nolan here. Uh, the more I was breaking down tape on him, the more I was reading up and looking into what I've been hearing about what, what he's been doing over in Australia. A lot of people are very high in his overall skill set. Nicholas Mota has looked really bad as of recently. He's taken a lot of damage. He's been finished in a lot of his losses. And, uh, you know, if Tom Nolan could have slowed the pace of, the, of this fight down, I think he would have found uh, his spots to potentially get Mota out of, out of there or have have taken control of this fight. But, uh, you know, he ran in early, got finished within a minute. Uh, his defense looked bad. He had his chin up, and uh, Nicholas Mota cracked him and got the finish there. If there was one thing we could have said that Nota probably still had was that danger, specifically early on in the fight. And uh, he cracked him there with the nasty right cross, finished him up there, and uh, that was a, a bad way for me to kick the card off. Uh, and the next fight, we had Gene Silva going out there and destroying Weston Wilson. I'll say this, even with him getting that first-round finish where he absolutely dominated the fight, I thought this was a bad look for Gene Silva. I think that a lot of other fighters, top tier fighters or, or fighters that are really that are going to really start to make a mark in the octagon. I know this was his debut. Uh, Weston Wilson was a slab of meat. He was a pork chop that was tossed up in the air. And when that slab of meat's tossed up in the air, we want to see, you know, we want to see a pit bull run up with some style points, jump up and snag that meat with, the, you know, with his with his grill and shake it up. And uh, Gene Silva was kind of like tripping. He was, he was like a dog. He was going up to get this, the slab of meat. He was tripping over his paws, but he still grabbed it. I did not like the way he got that finish of Weston Wilson. He should have just measured up, measured Wilson up and just teed off and knocked him clean out. All right. I mean, it was literally like a kid going up to hit a baseball on the tee. You know what I mean? It's sitting there. Go, go smash that, that ball out of the park, man. So Gene Silva, you know, coming out of the fighting nerd still has some potential. I think the, the, I think th this debut got to him a little bit. He should have really handled Wilson. Wilson should have never been fighting in the UFC, and uh, he might may have be may have been the worst fighter to have ever fought in the octagon. You take a look at his two performances; he will never have another shot to fight in the octagon. So, those two losses just absolutely horrible. Getting finished in the, in, in the first round, of both of those fights, and just looking horrible there. So maybe uh, you know Stephen Thompson put a word in and was able to get him to fight in the UFC, but not a UFC caliber fighter. Farid Basharat. Uh, you know, he he defeats Taylor Lapalus. I told you guys Lapalus is a good fighter. I know the scorecards read 30-27, but you know, for you for those of you guys who are really watching this fight, you saw Taylor making him work. Taylor's a good fighter and he will get W's uh continuously in the octagon against the right type of opponent. Uh, Farad Basharat is a good fighter. He's a very well-rounded fighter. He, uh, that, that's what we talked about, right, in regards to the Basharat brothers. They're so well-rounded. They have different tools that they can go to. They can strike with you, but then they can take you down. Um, they, they can do all types of things. They can take you to where they want you to be in the fight in order for them to get that W. So Farid, 
uh, remains undefeated. The Basharat brothers are undefeated, and uh, good work there for from Farid. Uh, now, this fighter here, Marcus McGee, uh, he is one of the fighters that, that really stole the show here, in my opinion, on this card. He's now 3-0 and in the UFC. Uh, he defeats Gaston Bolanos, another fighter that doesn't really have a name in the game, even though we respect his kickboxing skills and all that, and we understand he's a dangerous fighter. Uh, but even though Marcus McGee doesn't have that big victory just yet, uh, he's 9-1 and one as a pro. He's 33 years old, no spring chicken. The UFC needs to, to get him involved in some good fights uh, quickly because he's not young. This is a fighter that I really think has some potential. So as of now, he has victories uh, over Journey Newsom, JP Bays, and Gaston Bolanos. No, no one's raving about any of those guys, but just when you watch him fight, when you watch Marcus McGee fight, we understand that he is well-rounded. He is dangerous. Uh, fighting out of the MMA lab, this guy, is he's a complete fighter. Uh, he's a well-rounded fighter, and he could really give some guys problems. I like the power he possesses. He was willing to stand and trade with the kickboxer. Uh, you know, he, he was doing a little bit of it all. He's a good fighter. Uh, I'm excited to see how far he could push it in the bantamweight division. All right, after after that fight, one of the few losses I took in the card, and I did have a little bit of action on this. I had a two-unit play on Matthew Semmelsberger. Grabbed that at almost pick of mods uh, against Preston Parsons. I know. Semmelsberger was taking this fight on short notice from the research I was doing, man. He was still, uh, you know, after his last loss, he went right back to training, uh, very extensively. So, you know, he was really down on himself for that loss. And from what I was hearing, he was really, really in the gym. And I thought that the short notice fight wasn't going to be an issue. I thought that he would have been prepared and I thought he would have been the superior fighter over Parsons. Um, but it, it wasn't the case. He was, he struggled a little bit with the takedowns, but all in all, that wasn't really the issue. I mean, yeah, he did spent some time in his back, but he got back up to his feet. He wasn't able to uh, to tee off uh, on Parsons standing like I thought he could have. He was very hesitant. He was nervous about being taken down, and you saw he wasn't himself. If you look at the striking display that Semmelsberger showed all throughout that fight compared to any of the past performances, it didn't look anything similar. Uh, he was scared to let his hands go, and that cost him. You know, he was he was too worried about stuffing the takedowns, and he wasn't really worried enough about getting his own offensive threat off where then sometimes when you, when you push that offensive threat, that's actually a defense, right? When you're attacking the other fighter that you don't allow them to set those takedowns up. I think he, he dropped the ball there and Semmelsberger, you know, he, he's down, down and out right now, I and mean, he needs to, to climb out of the hole. Um, Waldo Cortez Acosta gets the, the job done over Andre Arlovsky. He was a huge favorite. Uh, wasn't an impressive performance. Remember we're doing matchmaking here uh, for all these fights. So, uh, he actually loses the third round against the old man Orlovsky. I thought Acosta didn't look that good, but all in all, you know, Acosta is a guy that is now 11 and one. And uh, specifically, if you want to include his Dana White's contender series fight, he's five and one fighting under the UFC banner. He's getting, getting these W's that lone loss against Marcos Rogerio de Lima. I want to throw him in there with uh, Muhammad Usman. I think that'd be a, a good fight there. Um, I think both guys are, are somewhat uh, comparable in some ways. And I think that, that would be a good match, and the winner of that can can look to continue to uh, to fine tune their overall skills because both guys don't really have it right now, but they're working on their game. Uh, they still have some time, right, up in this division, a division that you could really uh, fight at, uh, you know, up in age. And both those guys in their thirties. Um, one of the craziest knockouts we saw on the card: the Hulk, Bruno Ferreira, knocks out Phil Haas. Uh, Phil Haas is a very good fighter, just has no chin, and Bruno is a guy. That just will knock you out. If he's getting the job done, he's starching you. That's what he does once again here. Uh, I mean, he has a couple subs early on in his career, but I mean, this guy has been just dismantling everyone that he steps in there with. I love the accuracy of his strikes. I love the aggressiveness. Uh, he now has knockouts over Phil Haas and Gregory Rodriguez in the octagon. All right, so he quickly gains a lot of respect. And, uh, you know, the, the fight that I want to see next for him uh, it's against a guy that's kind of new to the yacht gun as well, but it's getting a lot of respect. And uh, that's the bullet, uh, Magomedov. I think that fight would be awesome. Two strikers squaring off. That's that's a fight. You could throw that fight on a huge card. You could you could throw that on uh, some of the best of cards, all right? And these guys are brand new to the game, but that's the type of respect they're instantly getting. You could throw them on all those big cards we're talking about. I mean, that's a fight. Tell me that we're not all super excited to see these guys square off. Uh, I would love to see that there. Uh, great performance. And uh, Phil Haas, man, uh, I don't know what's going to be next for him. Uh, I think he's creeping up towards the end of his career with the way he's getting put out. Uh, then we had Mario Batista defeating Ricky Simone, just a more complete mixed martial artist. That's why I was on him. Major regret that I didn't have an official play on him. Uh, you know, obviously, um, you know, I got to learn from that mistake there. I should have, I shouldn't hesitated. Should have had a, at least one or two units on him. I almost typed it up and uh, I, I did 
take it back. But uh, Mario Batista is the more complete fighter and uh, looked good against Ricky. Ricky's is a beast. You know what he could do to certain types of fighters, but when he's facing off against these very well-rounded fighters that that can, uh, you know, keep the fight standing for a good amount of time and they could use their striking and they're more rangy. He can run into some trouble there. And the fight I want to see next uh, for, for Batista is Jonathan Martinez, which I think would be a great fight. Uh, you know, you, you look at the topology rankings right now in the bantamweight division, which we may see some movement here with the win. Uh, but Mario Batista uh, is number 12. Number 11 is Jonathan Martinez. And there's really not a lot of other options for, for, uh, for either of those guys. I mean, you got Umar Nurmagomedov, who's also in the mix, but no one seems to want to fight him. You could say maybe uh, Batista against Nurmagomedov or Jonathan Martinez. Other than that, all the guys towards the top of this division have fights already. Uh, Sanhagen doesn't have a fight. Uh, but I, personally, I mean, you got a lot going on at the top of this division. So um, realistically, Jonathan Martinez should be facing off with Batista or Umar Nurmagomedov because I think Sanhagen's going to wait for something else. Uh, he already has that, that kind of respect and he's chomping at the bit. Jim Miller gets the face crank choke over Gabriel Benitez. Jim Miller, an absolute legend, the future Hall of Famer. He calls out Paul Felder. You guys know that's the fight that I want to see. Booked that for UFC 300. Paul Felder needs to stop playing games. All right, he's talking about he needs to wait and see. Uh, you know, he's most likely up for it, but he needs to talk to the family. Family he needs to talk to the to the ESPN uh, or, or excuse me, the UFC broadcast team. Listen, stop playing around. Listen, I'm going to be brutally honest here. Big respect to Paul Felder. He was always a good fighter. Uh, you know, he's not really a fighter that accomplished that much in the UFC, right? And uh, he's great on the broadcast team and whatnot. But if he's he if he wants to be a fighter that, that gets a little bit more respect, excuse me, uh, even a broadcaster that gets a little bit more respect. He needs to have a couple more accomplish, accomplishments under his name. And obviously, this would just be one more he could add. I mean, this would be a one and done type of fight, but he has some good fights, but this is a fight. He goes in on a huge UFC 300 card and beats the 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 man who fights on the, these, uh, the, these uh, every 100 type of cards in Jim Miller. You go out there and you, you defeat him. I mean, that's a, a big fight. Uh, to put under your resume for Paul Felder there. And then when he comes back on the mic, he has that much more respect. So he needs to think about that. All right. He needs to think about that because yeah, he's great, but let's be honest. All right. This, you know, there's, there's fighters that want his job that have accomplished more. And if they could hop on the mic and they could, uh, you know, work on some things and be uh, marketable there, they'll surpass him over time. I could see Paul Felder eventually losing his job. So jump on this opportunity and uh, make your name stand out that much more so you're respected throughout the years. This is a monumental type of fight to fight on UFC 300. Go out there and knock Jim Miller out. Uh, I think Jim Miller would take that fight, though. Um, Magomed and Kalaev gets that knockout over Johnny Walker. You know that was the other leg that I had uh, with, with Tom Nolan there. Ma you guys know I feel Magomed and Kalaev is the uncrowned champ. Um, there's just no question about it. I want him versus Alex Pereira next. Um, whatever, whatever needs to be done, just make that fight. Let him snatch his belt up the belt that he should have had for some time i know there's been some complications some weird types of fights but he really is the light heavyweight champion you guys know it i personally feel that he will get alex Pereira down to the mat and dominate that fight i know Pereira did good there against jan Blakovich for the most part but i think uncle live is a different type of animal i see people saying oh he's more of a striker anyways and not really much of a grappler you guys are completely forgetting the ability that he has with his grappling. Trust me, his his grappling is top-notch in the division, and I think he snatches the belt from Pereira. I think that he's the more complete fighter. He will defeat Jamal Hill. Maybe Jamal Hill will be the fighter that gives him so some maybe some of the most trouble he'll face, but I, I think he handles that as well. Um, I thought that he already defeated Jan Blakovich in that fight. It was a close one. He defeated him, um, knocks out Johnny Walker. Um, I think that he just is going to run this division. All right. I love the way he is a cerebral, patient fighter, and he's so well-rounded. I mean, that's the type of guy you want to back. Uh, that's the type of guy you want money on, to have money on, and I'll take him against all the best in the light heavyweight division. He will uh, be the champion here moving forward, man. It's it, it just time, it, the time will come, all right? So, again, not the greatest card betting for me here. I hope you guys did good. Luckily for me, we didn't lose that many units, and uh, we have a huge card coming up this up this upcoming weekend and I'm going to have a an abundance of units out and I'm going to snatch up those losses and then we're going to take some profit uh, for the year right away to kick the, this uh this year off here so all right guys hope hopefully you guys like this recap and like I said you guys can expect a lot of content coming your way 
you guys will see some some short videos coming your way for UFC 297, all types of stuff. And I've got a bunch of my equipment just in as we're speaking. So I'm setting some things up over here and expect a whole new thing coming at you guys. All right, guys, signing out. Tell her. Uh -huh. Welcome to the show. This is the MMA fortune teller. Yeah. The MMA fortune MMA teller. Fortune the teller. teller. The teller. The teller. The teller.